Hi guys, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, we are going to be talking about how to decorate a mid-century modern home. So if you're not familiar with my channel, I have a series where I go through all the different interior design styles. I talk about combining interior design styles, and now I'm really sort of to diving in to the different interior design styles that are super, super popular. And I'm starting to break down what are those interior design styles all about? Um, how can you achieve this look? What are the benefits, some tips that I have, as well as different places that you can buy furniture and some of my own personal favorites. And um, yeah, so today we're talking about mid-century modern. So we're gonna do a deep dive into the whole design style and really break it out so that you can get this look for your own home. Let's get to it. Okay, so what is mid-century modern? Well, it is a design style that really started in kind of the 40s to around the 70s, uh, mid-century basically, um, here in North America. And it's really sort of a takeoff of kind of the 1920s uh, Bauhaus movement in Germany. So that's sort of where the roots of this came from, but it really sort of took hold with some really iconic designs that came out of the 1940s, 50s, 60s, things like that. So that's the kind of period that we're talking about. And this period is really interesting, of course, in uh, world history because it's the post-war era. This is the period after the war where we had lots of different kind of new technology that came out, which meant a lot of really new and interesting materials, especially man-made materials uh, that were kind of brought into the fold and designers could really use, and they started to incorporate it into their furniture in sort of really unique and interesting ways. It was also a period where we saw a large baby boom, and it was just sort of a really sort of period of time where we had a thriving working and middle class and so we saw a lot of um, demand for furniture that was maybe a little bit more democratic a bit more egalitarian a bit more um, you know accessible to large large groups of people instead of just sort of having really beautiful furniture but it was kind of really exquisite and really detailed that was only sort of meant for the rich this was sort of meant for kind of a more mainstream audience this was a democratic version of design which is amazing and this really truly meant that kind of a lot of uh, working and middle class people had access to beautiful design. So as a result, you see a lot of really sort of clean, simple lines, really sort of basic furniture, which is sort of, um, you know, gentle curves and straight lines, really sort of keeping things simple, but a lot of the introduction of kind of new materials that we hadn't seen before. Um, also manufacturing made things a lot cheaper, and therefore um, we were able to sort of mass produce some of these pieces of furniture that was not really, we weren't able to do as well before. Uh, so that meant that things were, again, from a price perspective, a lot more accessible to more people. So that's kind of the basics of what mid-century design sort of is. Uh, now let's go through some of the benefits of it. So the first benefit that really comes to mind is sort of this idea that it was easier to manufacture and thus it was a lot cheaper. So mid-century modern designs tend to be a lot simpler. They use things like wood veneer rather than having sort of solid wood furniture like you saw before. So that made it easier to manufacture and it also made it more accessible to more people. And then another benefit benefit of mid-century modern is that it really sort of favors people that like that modern, clean, simple look in their furniture or in their design. So we can't ignore the sort of influence of Scandinavian design in mid-century, but there are some key differences which we are going to talk about in a minute. I think if you saw my Scandinavian video that I talked about last week, um, you really see a lot of admiration for Scandinavian design, especially in that egalitarian approach, uh, which is creating things that are just sort of really si simple and clean and minimal. Um, and that was something that was really, really uh, kind of a factor in mid-century modern. So if you tend to like that design, this might be the design for you. Okay, so who is this design not for? And that's really important to talk about so that you know, you know, this isn't for everybody, it might not be for you. So the first group of people that comes to mind are people that are the traditionalists. You know who you are. Uh, these are people that really just love that old kind of antique sort of furniture. The traditionalists, the people that are looking for a lot of ornamentation, a lot of detail um, in their design or in their furniture. And they're not really looking for sort of really clean, simple shapes. They're looking for things that are sort of really sort of elegant with a lot of embellishments on them. So if that's you, I would say mid-century modern is not going to work for you. The second group that it might not be for, and this is sort of more like a word of caution rather than necessarily that you're not going to like mid-century modern at all, um, but I do think sometimes because this period of history is so iconic and so familiar to us, sometimes I think if you just really lean into the style and only do a mid-century modern home, it can can look a little bit like a TV show set, or it can look a little bit like a museum and not necessarily like a home. So I just encourage you that if you are going to use this style, which I think is an amazing style, it's probably one of, if not my favorite design styles, um, then I think if you do want to incorporate it in, just maybe start to bring in your own personality or maybe another design style to sort of make sure that it doesn't look like a TV set. 
Okay, so now let's get to the tips for how to decorate a mid-century modern home. So tip number one for you guys is to just really, really stick to those really simple basic shapes. So again, similar to the Scandinavian design that we talked about before, um, you want to favor things that are just really clean, simple lines, uh, really simple, gentle curves, but nothing too ostentatious, nothing too sort of um, you know, with lots of embellishments and sort of lots of different detailed work, right? So you just want to favor things that are just really clean and simple in a mid-century home. Tip number two is to incorporate geometrics in your space. So during this period, we saw a lot of geometric patterns and some of the really simple and easy ways you can do that is to bring in sort of a geometric pattern in pillows or in throws. Um, if you're really bold and you're really crazy like me, you can do geometric wallpaper. That was of course super, super popular uh, in the mid-century. So definitely incorporating some geometric metrics and some really funky, cool, crazy wallpaper is an awesome way to decorate your place in mid-century. Um, and if you think that that's maybe a little over the odds for you, if you think that's a little bit risky, so you can maybe just bring in a geometric print uh, in the form of like an art piece. So you can just uh, frame it on your wall and it kind of brings in that geometric and that pop of color um, and that really sort of interesting print and interesting uh, pattern into your space, uh, but in kind of a really sort of safer way than just kind of like going for a crazy wallpaper. Okay, so tip number three is don't don't be afraid of using a pop of color. So we talked about Scandinavian design and there's some similarities in the form and the of the furniture and things like that. Okay, but this is really one of the key differences between the two design styles is that mid-century modern tends to favor really big, bold colors. So if you're not afraid of color, then uh, mid-century might really work for you. I'm thinking if you're kind of looking for the 50s and 60s, things like um, bright orange, things like purple, olive, bright red, um, sort of a peacock, uh, blue, green, teal is amazing. Uh, so don't be afraid of doing like kind of a really big, bold color. It's just a really great way of bringing a sort of retro uh, mid-century look into your space. Now, here's a tip for you guys. I know some of you are probably really afraid of color and that makes sense because you're really concerned about what colors are gonna come together. Are they warm? Are they cool? And I've talked about this in previous videos as well, but here's my tip. So a really great way, you guys, to bring color into your home and to do it in a really cohesive way is to repeat that color throughout the space. So again, if you have like a really funky, cool geometric wallpaper, you can sort of rather than just kind of have it in the background and sort of um, have it be really big and bold and funky, try to see if you can incorporate that color into other places. So if you have a really, really bold print, uh, you can always put in a pillow or maybe in your rug or in sort of some decor items or whatever. It's like a really great way of just kind of repeating that color over and over and it really makes your space feel a lot more cohesive. Okay, so tip number four, you guys, is do not be afraid of using sort of really big, bold sculptural pieces of furniture in your space. So there are some really, truly iconic pieces of furniture that came out of this era. So things like the Ames chair, things like the egg chair, the womb chair, um, the Barcelona chair, things like the Noguchi table or the tulip table, the tulip chairs, right? These things are so iconic. They're so typical of that period. So if you want to kind of recreate that mid-century look in your own space, bring in some of these iconic pieces into your space. There's loads of them out there. Now, it doesn't mean you have to, by the way, because I'll admit some of these pieces of furniture are a little bit weird. They're quite a statement and they may not work for you. And that doesn't mean that you have to use them, but if you love them, then it's a really great way to bring them into your space because it's gonna feel super mid-century and uh, it's gonna work with the rest of your mid-century decor. Okay, tip number five, you guys, is to get really creative with sort of new man-made materials. So you kind of talked about this where there was different materials that were brought in in that era. So that can be things like plywood and lucite and different plastics that came in in that era. Uh, this is a period of time where we saw a lot of new man-made materials sort of enter into the furniture and into the design space and they were used and they sort of allowed designers to create something that was really unique and creative that they weren't able to use before. So a good example of this is the Ames LCW chair. Uh, this chair is made of plywood and that was something that, you know, is just really, really cool and is so mid-century and just so kind of typical of that era, but it is a man-made uh, piece of wood that wasn't accessible to people. So it's using sort of those man-made materials that was just very, very typical of that era. So if you want to create a mid-century modern look in your own home, that might be a really great way to do it. So the sixth tip that I have for you guys to get a mid-century modern look in your home is to really open up those windows. Don't use really heavy drapery paddles. Don't use anything. Uh, or even just leave them completely bare. You can use something kind of really simple um, and really light, but we want to focus on letting in that natural light. That was something that the mid-century designers really loved about Scandinavian design 
is just really light and bright windows using that natural light into the home without kind of really sort of heavy roughly sort of um, drapery panels like you might have seen in more traditional design uh, this is something where we really want to open up those windows and uh, get a lot of natural light into the space okay now let's talk about where are some of my favorite places to shop for mid-century furniture and the first one I want to talk about is West Elm so I think West Elm is one of the best places to shop for mid-century modern furniture um, it has a reasonably good price point and this is kind of their bread and butter this is like just what I find West Elm is really sort of narrowing in on is this sort of mid-century modern look so there's a few different designs that I want to talk about here today and as I said all links will be in the description down below so West Elm has lots of big big furniture pieces they've got like a media console and a bar cabinet you may have even seen it in the background of my videos because um, I do have a couple of pieces from West Elm that are very mid-century and they use a lot of this acorn wood which is really beautiful it's kind of got a medium toned sort of wood color you also got some beautiful things like this saddle brown side chair which I think is gorgeous you're seeing these brown peg legs that were very very common for this era another really great retailer that I think you want to check out if you're looking for mid-century is CB2 um, I really love CB2 one of their most popular chairs that I have seen for years is their parlor chair uh, you again may have noticed it in the background of some of my videos um, and it comes in a whole bunch of different colors so you can lean into some really cool geometric patterns you can lean into some of that like peacock blue or you can do orange you can do red it comes in loads and loads of different colors but it's got this really beautiful sort of slight curve but it's a very mid-century uh, shape and it's got these really cute peg legs at the bottom as well so the parlor chair from CB2 is awesome lots of really great options at CB2 that I think you'll want to check out another retailer that is really popular is design within reach some really beautiful pieces you can find on design within reach is like the Ames fiberglass chair which is beautiful and very very classic I see this chair all over the place I mean it's still popular now and I think that really really sort of speaks to this era right that a lot of these furniture pieces that were created 50 60 70 years ago are just as relevant today as they were and almost some of them can almost get to a point of overdone right um, but I do think that they're still beautiful designs and they're still something that are you know they're, they're still resonating with us all these years later which is so cool for decor pieces I recommend something like Society6 or even Etsy uh, they both have really 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 awesome um, and accessible price points for lots of different types of like art pieces or sort of really decor pieces that I think would really work you can find wallpaper as well so if you're looking for something in a geometric or uh, you're looking for something just to kind of in a certain color to sort of maybe work with the rest of your furniture pieces to create that sort of signature mid-century look both of those are really great options um, I found these pillows from Society6 that I think would really work uh, I've got a couple of different options here gradient art which was super super popular in the mid-century and I think this looks really retro and cool uh, this mid-century throw is another great option for you and I found these other cool pieces from Etsy uh, this starburst wall clock I think is really interesting and you can also find different pieces like plant stands and um, coffee tables and there's actually lots of different items that you can find on Etsy and again you're getting much more of like that handmade feel on Etsy which you know sometimes mid-century modern um, can feel a bit mass-produced because of all the reasons we've already talked about uh, that's one of the kind of benefits of this design style um, but you can find sort of really unique pieces on Etsy and definitely worth checking out so the last place I think that you can find mid-century modern furniture and are honestly the most sustainable place to uh, find mid-century is either at thrift stores, estate sales, or in like grandma and grandpa's old attic. So I think all these years later, these designs are still resonating with people, but a lot of those classic pieces are still around and they're still actually, you're able to find them. Um, I know that my grandparents, if you went into their house, uh, a lot of their furniture uh, looked like it, it was from the 1950s. Um, and so a lot of those pieces are still around and you can still use them and bring them into your own home uh, so that's another really great way to get some authentic mid-century pieces is rather than buying it at West Elm which there's no shame in buying things at West Elm but if you can find it at an estate sale or you can find it at a thrift store or you can find it in grandma grandpa's uh, basement all the better so that's it for me you guys uh, if you want to learn more about different interior design styles I will link them in this video and uh, you can check out this playlist and look at all the different design styles there and uh, I will see you all in the next video thanks bye